welcome to week three of Hang Time at Home. My name is Laura Hur, and I'm so glad that you decided to come and join us this week. We have a wonderful program for you today. I had lots of awesome helpers submit some videos so that we have lots of fun things to learn while we are doing Hang Time at Home. To get us started, we have fun and games with Jake. Jake's got another fun game for us, and we're going to check it out right now. Hey guys, uh, fun games with Jake again. Well, welcome back. I know it's tough out there, tough couple of weeks, but uh, online school started and stuff like that, but it's all right. So I'm gonna keep on going with our fun game with Jake uh, episode, and today we're gonna play some rock, paper, scissors. So uh, I'm here, uh, pretty much I think you would all know the rules, but this is rock, paper, scissors. All right, I'm gonna say rock, paper, scissors, says shoot, then you're gonna throw something out, all right? And you're gonna try to beat me, all right? So here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, says shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, says shoot. Alright. Rock, paper, scissors, says shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, says shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, says shoot. Man, I'm gonna rock three times. Rock, paper, scissors, says shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, says shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, say shoot. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, say shoot. All right, we'll do a couple more now, all right? Rock, paper, scissors, say shoot. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, say shoot. All right, one more. Let's see if you can beat me on this one. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, say shoot. All right. Well. That's pretty much it. Uh, that was fun game with Jake today. I hope you guys were able to beat me. Uh, if you beat me, uh, tell me you beat me, you know? Um, play with your siblings, play, I don't know, go on FaceTime with your friends or something. Tell them how many points you scored against me. Tell, like, have a competition or something, you know? Get some fun going in your household. I um, uh, hope you all guys are having a good couple weeks. I know it's tough out there, but uh, keep, keep moving through this, all right? I'll see you guys next week. Hey kids, this is Hang Time at Home, Cooking with Christian, part three. Today we are making apple turnovers. First, we're gonna spoon in two and a half cups of flour. Then we use one and a half teaspoons of salt. These are the ingredients we're gonna use for the pie crust. Then we mix it all together. Next, we're gonna use six tablespoons of unsalted butter cubed. So we're gonna take our newly cubed butter and add it to our mixture. And we need 3 4th cup of chilled vegetable <laughs> shortening. really chilled. Next we're gonna take two knives and we're kind of just gonna work our vegetable shortening and butter into the flour. This might take a little bit of time but after a while you see that your butter and vegetable shortening has gotten into tiny little pieces and this is what this is exactly what we're looking for. You're just gonna keep adding water and then stirring it in. So once our dough kind of looks like that, we're gonna just take it out and you wanna transfer it to a floured surface, just like this. And then we wanna pour some flour on our hands. Just a good amount. And then we're just gonna kind of work it into our freshly made dough. So once the flour is fully uh, mixed into the dough that we used on our flat surface, we need to cut the dough in half. So now we're gonna flatten out one of our halves at a time until it's around one inch thick. So once we have both of our discs, we're gonna take one of them and we wanna tightly wrap it in saran wrap. Now that we have both of our discs, 
We're just gonna put them in the refrigerator for around an hour to two hours to chill. So I've pre-sliced and pre-peeled four apples. Now we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar and then two tablespoons of flour. Now we're gonna use one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. One teaspoon vanilla extract. And now we're gonna mix up our apple mixture. Try and get every apple to get some of the cinnamon, sugar, flour, vanilla extract combination. So now we have our pre-made dough over here that's been sitting in the fridge for an hour. We're gonna take a rolling pin and then roll out our dough. We're trying to get a circular shape. Now we're just gonna take a knife and just kinda of cut a line down the middle. And now I just scooped out a quarter of our apple mixture onto one half of our dough. So now we wanna take some milk and we're just a brush and you wanna brush the perimeter of our dough with the milk. Now we're gonna fold it in half, just like this, and kind of press down around the side so it's sealed. So now we're gonna take a fork and just pinch, pinch close the sides of our apple turnover. Just all around the outside perimeter where we sealed it. Our final step before it goes into the oven is taking an egg, we need to crack it open, and we just wanna crack it into uh, something we can stir it in. So now we're gonna just beat the egg very gently since I chose the world's smallest cup. And we're just gonna brush it on top of our dessert. <laughs> well, as you can see, we had a little misfortune here, so trying to get all the egg to stay on the apple turnover. Still be delicious. So now, just for funsies, we're gonna put some slits in the top. So now we're gonna cook this at a temperature of 375 for 40 minutes or until golden brown. All right, and this is the final finished product. Nom, 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 nom. Some
instrument of the living God. Hi, I'm Madison, and this week we'll be doing more ballet. So, last week I mentioned how the plie is one of the most important steps in ballet, and so I'm going to teach you a short combination. So first you can just watch and then we'll demonstrate and then we'll do it together with music. So first we're going to prep our arms and it's going to be out in second position. And then you're going to do one plie and two plies. And then you're going to do a grand plie, which is a plie, but you're going to lift your heels off the floor and then put them down as soon as you can. And then we're going to bend forward. And then we're going to do back. And then we're going to go to second position. And we're going to do the same thing with the plies, except we're going to bend into the bar and then away from the bar. We're in fourth position, forward and back. And fifth position, side, side. And then at the end, you can bounce. And this is called susu, when you have one foot crossed in front of the other. And then we're just gonna bounce it. And this is my dog, Selena. <laughs> Hello Hangtime friends, it's time for our class with Brenda and Jonathan. For today we have some nifty nifty little projects to do that you might like. Well we have ballerinas you can do and we'll show you another project you can do a little later. But we want to get started and show you what you need first. So, so you're going to need some watercolor paper, you're also going to need some watercolors, Two pen, uh, two brushes, one is small and a medium. And this interesting coffee straw, coffee stir or straw, anything you can find because it's hard to find this. Yeah, um, some water, don't forget. So first you're gonna choose a pitcher, I choose ballerinas, and we are gonna paint it uh, there to do. So you can trace it or you can draw it in your watercolor paper. So what I did first was trace it. After you have it in your paper, you're gonna use the small brush with a little bit of water and black color. So you're gonna paint your ballerinas and you're gonna leave the tutu empty. No painting. Then, your next step is gonna be you're gonna now dip the brush with a lot of water and you're gonna choose a color. Let's get red. So we are gonna put their color in their ballerina tattoo. Okay. Remember I 
lot has to be a lot of water because this is why you're gonna blow ready to do the fun part almost there time to blow now let's do it down Spaces wide, you can just fill in with your brush, just like that. Perfect. Now let's use another color blue. You can choose any color. Remember when you paint your ballerina black, you had to leave in three to five minutes to let it dry. Because when the colors touch the black part, if there is no dry, your picture is going to turn a little black. And then it's going to mix the other colors. I'm going to make it so colorful. So, let's do it. Oof, that looks cool. Now down. Beautiful. I'm sure you're gonna do a beautiful job. So those are my ballerinas and also I make some funny faces. So if you are stressed at home, do art is a wonderful way to express how you are feeling. So if you are stressed for this quarantine, here is a face. And after you do after you make the craft, you might probably feel a little more relaxed which is it's a point to do hunt time. We miss you, friends. So some other ideas. Maybe you can make some fish and some Ooh. other random things, like some Nemo's and stuff. If you're looking for some other ideas of what to do, because you don't have to just do that or that, you can do some fish. Or yeah. something else that would like look really good with an Could explosion of color. Or an Elsa, of course. Yeah. Welcome to our Bible story time. This week when I was trying to decide what Bible story we should go over, I was kind of thinking about the fact that I've been in my house for quite a long time this week. I felt in some ways a little like being a little bit trapped, a little bit helpless, sometimes even a little bit hopeless. And all of a sudden God gave me a great idea that I should tell you a story about someone who could definitely relate to how we all might be feeling. The story of Noah begins in Genesis 6, and unfortunately, it was a time where everyone on earth was doing really, really, really bad things. It says that the Lord saw how great man's wickedness on earth had become, and that every inclination of his thoughts was evil all the time. Now, sometimes, maybe we have a bad day, and maybe we get mad or we get angry, but usually those feelings pass and then everything is right again. Well, the people of Noah's time, it says that all the time, every time, all day, all night, they were only doing bad things. And this made God so sad. So it says in the Bible that the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth. Men and animals, creatures that move along the ground and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But it says, but there was a man named Noah and he found favor in the eyes of the Lord. The Bible tells us that Noah was a righteous man blameless amongst the people of his time and that he walked with God. Noah had a relationship with God and Noah was always trying to do the right thing even though everyone around him was doing the wrong thing. Well, it says that the earth was so bad that God decided that he was going to put an end to everything by sending a flood. However, he had a relationship with Noah and he had a plan even though things were really hard. So he talked to Noah and he said, Noah, I've got a plan. I want you to make a big gigantic boat, a big ark. And he gave him the specific dimensions for how it was to be built and what it needed to have into it because God said, I'm going to bring a flood to the earth and this ark is going to keep you and your family safe. So Noah built the ark just as God had commanded him. The Bible tells us that God also gave Noah further instructions and he told Noah that he was to bring two of every kind 
of living creature, male and female, to keep them alive with him. So I wanted to show you guys how cool it would look to see the animals coming two by two and walking onto the ark, but I realized that I don't live on a farm. So I went hunting around my house and I found the next best thing. Can you imagine how exciting it must have been to see the animals coming two by two up to the ark so that they could get on safely with Noah and his family? Again, for full disclosure, these aren't actually real animals. They were random Pokemon that we had in our house. But you get the point. The Bible tells us that Noah was 600 years old when floodwaters came on the earth. But Noah and his wife and his sons and all the animals entered the ark and they were protected and safe and sound. The Bible tells us that in total, the waters flooded the earth for 150 days, which is a very long time to be on an ark with a lot of awesome animals, but also only your family. But the Bible tells us that God remembered Noah and all of the animals that were on the ark and that he set up, sent a wind over the earth and finally the waters began to recede. The ark came to rest on a mountain and the waters continued to slowly go down from there. So the coolest thing is at the end of the story of Noah and the ark that God made a promise to Noah to never flood the earth ever again, which is such an important and awesome thing. And it says in the Bible that God gave Noah a sign of the promise that he made. He said, I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be a sign of the promise between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and a rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my promise between me and all the living creatures of every kind. The Bible tells us that whenever a rainbow appears in the clouds, that God sees it and remembers the promise between him and all of the living creatures on earth. We can learn so much from the story of Noah. First of all, sometimes we are in situations that are really, really hard that we have no control over. A lot of us kind of feel like that during this time of quarantine. However, we can always make the most of it. Noah had his family in the ark and he also had animals of every kind. So that would have been pretty cool. Um, secondly, we can just remember that God is always with us. Even though Noah and his family were on the ark for such a long time, they probably felt very lonely and alone at times but God remembered his promise and God was with them. And finally, when we do see something so cool like a rainbow, we can remember that God keeps his promises. God makes so many promises in the Bible that are so helpful to us during this time. God promises to never leave us or forget us. God promises that he's going to provide everything we need and all of those promises we can find in our Bibles. So, that is the story of Noah. That's our Bible lesson for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope when you hear it, it gives you hope. It reminds you that even in the toughest of times, God is with us and God keeps his promises. This week we have another episode of Bible verse ABCs. And so if you were here last week, you'll remember that we went over three Bible verses. Um, one that started with the letter A, one that started with the letter B, and one that started with the letter C. So this week we're only going to be focusing on one verse. It is super important and I really hope that we can all memorize it and then apply it to our lives. So can you guys tell me what letter verse we are up to? Yes, D. So, the verse that we have today, again, it comes from the Bible. It can be found in James chapter 4, verse 8. And it says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Once again, it is draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So, do you guys think you could say it with me? We will do it in our normal voices to start. I'll let you guys warm up. Are you ready? One, two, three. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Okay, amazing. Now, I wanna hear who is going to be able to say it the quietest. Are you ready? One, two, three. Good job, I could hardly hear you at all. You guys must be doing such an amazing job. Now, I have a special guest on my show today and her name is Jess and she is my wonderful sister. 
Jess is gonna come. Well, she's right here. Say hi to Jess. Hi. And Jess is going to say this first as loud as she can. And we want you to say it as loud as you can too. Are you ready? I'll count you off, guys. <laughs> Take it away, Jess. One, two, three. Draw near to God and he will be drawn to you. Close. <laughs> oh, that's not it. <laughs> draw near to God and he will draw near to you. <laughs> you guys did so good, so loud. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, we're going to say it one more time. This time, I'm going to see if you guys can say it without our help. Do you guys think you can do it? All right, this one has a little bit of a twist. I want you to say it in the silliest voice that you got. I'm not gonna say a word, I'm just gonna be listening. Do you guys think you got it? I know you can. The Bible says you can do all things through Christ. All right. I'll count you down. One, two, three. Good job. You guys are crushing this Bible verse memorization. Um, this week, I thought this verse was um, really important for us to know. It says, the first part says, as you guys now know, draw near to God. And I think that we are in a super unique time of life, um, a time that um, brings about a lot of different emotions. Maybe some of you are scared and have a lot of fears because we don't really know what's going on. Maybe some of you feel lonely because there's no school and you're not really um, going any place and you're not able to see your friends. So maybe you feel alone and maybe you feel um, like you have no one to talk to. Maybe you are not feeling well or maybe one of your family members are not feeling well and that can be really hard to deal with. Um, but the good news is that the Bible, the Bible is God's word and that verse comes from God's word. So God tells us to draw near to him and there's multiple ways that we can draw near to God. And especially right now, since most of us don't have too much going on, uh, we could really take advantage of this time to draw near to God. So I think one way we could draw near to God is by praying to him. And praying is just a conversation that we have with God. And he asks us to um, draw near to him um, and have conversation with him and to tell God all of our fears and all of our worries and um, also just to tell him everything that is going well in our lives and all the things that we are thankful for, we can tell him um, that as well. And so another way we can draw near to God is by reading his word, which is what we are doing here right now. Um, so hopefully you guys have a Bible at home or um, maybe if you have an iPad or a phone or if your parents have any of that, you can download the Bible app and you could read the Bible on um, your device as well. Because it's another really great way to know more about God. Um, because in here you'll find out that God loves you so much and that this time that we're going through might be really scary, um, but that God loves you and that God knows exactly um, what is going on. God holds the entire world in his hands and he, um, he wants to provide for you and he wants to take care of you and he wants to have a relationship with you. So I really encourage you guys to draw near to God during this time and tell him how you're feeling because um, he wants to help you. And we are actually never alone, even if it feels like it, because we aren't able to see any of our friends or anything like that right now. But God is with us right here. Um, His Holy Spirit lives inside of us, and that is so special. Um, and the second part of that verse says, when we draw near to God, He will draw near to us. That is a promise from God. So if we take those steps and we pray and we talk to God and we open our Bibles, um, God will meet us there. And God has some really great things He wants to say to you too. But for now, just know how much he loves you, how much he cares for you, how much he is looking out for you and your family during this time. Um, God is in control and we can trust him. Um, so don't forget those truths. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. I love you guys so much and I can't wait to see you again in person. Um, whenever that will be but for now i'm super thankful for hang time at home and i'm super thankful for each of you um, who are a part of it so keep being amazing and my encouragement to you is to 
draw near to God and know that he will also draw near to you. Love you guys. So I just wanted to thank you for joining us for Hang Time at Home today. We love being able to put together all of these videos to encourage you, to teach you all kinds of fun things. Um, and just as a reminder, God keeps his promises. When you see a rainbow in the sky, it's our reminder that no matter how crazy things get, no matter how much we feel like it might not work out, God is someone who keeps his promises and he promises to always be looking out for us. This is our Hang Time Challenge for the week. Draw your own rainbow. Put it up in your house and let it be a reminder that God is a God who keeps his promises and that we can always hope in him. We love you guys, we miss you, and we will look forward to seeing you next week for Hang Time at Home. Thank you.